We don't know why. We don't have any trouble with this. Yeah. We wouldn't send it down here. Okay. So yeah, Amber, if you can uh, do some magic wand stuff so that I can see everybody's expressions, that would be fun. They, they to see you or so we'll just want to make sure that everybody has their camera turned on. There's either you the, everybody is going to see what you're seeing here. So either everybody will see this where everybody will see you. All right, so hello and welcome. To the beginning, the virtual workshop that's gonna kick off Homestead National Historicals Parks, um, uh, Prairie Visions Fiddle Festival, Tallgrass Prairie Fiddle Festival. So today we're going to have Debbie Greenblatt. She's going to teach three songs by ear. She's going to talk about um, the significance of those songs and why she selected them. Uh, so we have the annual Fiddle Festival every year to remember the important role that music played in the Homestead Act. Um, we know from primary documents like diaries and letters um, that homesteaders would often get extremely lonely on the prairie, you know, 160 acres apart. They were very um, often isolated um, and music became a, a form of comfort and also a form of celebration. So with that, I will kick it off to Debbie. Thanks, Amber. Welcome to the workshop. I have three tunes that I think are obscure enough that maybe none of you have ever heard of them. So you'll either like it or at least it will expand your minds. Uh, the first one is a two-parter. It's, it's a hoedown. So I'm going to play it for you first, A-A-B-B, -B, and then you can try and figure out where it's from. <laughs> guessed where it is from. This is actually a Scandinavian tune collected by a fellow named Elmo Wick. Elmo Wick is the fellow who started the Minnesota State Fiddle Association, which is still in existence today. Uh, Elmo was born in 1886, died in 1972, and he left behind him a whole pile of recordings of tunes that he had collected from older fiddlers that had come over from Scandinavia. And this tune is one of those. The uh, Minnesota State Fiddle Association folks are now collecting these tunes and making them available. And that's how come I got this wonderful copy of this tune, which is a Rhinelander. And uh, it's from the Crow River country. And uh, it's a lovely tune. Uh, let's do it a little bit slower. It starts out, you could actually analyze it in terms of questions and answers. So the first question, and it's an ascending scale passage, and it goes like this. Question number one. So let's do that question a couple of times. One and two. And let's do it again. And two. is followed by a little bit of an answer and the answer starts on an upbeat 
what I really like about this tune is that it skips up to sixths. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I love the sound of six. They're really fun. So the answer to that previous question is... Let's do that one a few times. One, two, go. Do it again. One and go. One more time. Now let's do the question and the answer. Good luck. One and go. Let's do that again. One and two. One more time. One and go. That is followed by yet another question that is similar instruction in uh, structure from the first question, and that starts on a first finger on the D string. And this next question is this. Uh, it starts right on the downbeat. One and two and. Or you could just think of the fingering, and here it goes. One, three, oh, one, one, two, three. Just a nice ascending scale passage. One and two and. Good, one more time. Now the answer to this question is very similar to the answer to the previous question. It starts with an upbeat. And then it does jump up that sixth. I love sixths. Let's do that answer several times. One and two. And again, and go. So it starts on a third finger on the A string. Three, two, one, and then it jumps up to a second finger on the E string. Two, one, oh. And then back to the D string with a high third finger. Let's do that answer a few more times. One and two. And again, and go. Now let's do that second question and the answer. Good luck. Do you remember the question? One, two, it starts on a first finger on the D string. One and two and. dangerously and do the whole first half of the tune. Good luck. It is repeated. One and two and one and two. And the B part starts with a second finger on the A string, and then it goes up a sixth. Isn't that nice? Let's do that a few times and go. Again, one 
and two. One more time. Yes, and the answer is uh, this. Starts with a C sharp, one and go. Now, when I was given the transcription of this tune, those slurs that I'm putting in weren't there, but I think that's how it should be. Otherwise, it would be. It just sounds too mechanical, so that's why I slur them. But feel free to do different slurs. It's such a personal thing. Uh, so that answer again is one and two. that first question and the answer. One and two. Now the next question is exactly the same as the first question. And the answer is just the same as that immediately previous answer. Except the last measure is the same as the ending of the first half. So there is quite a bit of repetition here. So let's do part B in its entirety, and then we'll go right back up to part A, and we'll do, so we'll do B, B, A, B. Best of luck. One and two, so we're starting with the, right there. One and two and one. questions are there any questions in the chat amber i don't see any questions in the chat but if um, anyone wants to unmute themselves if they have a question feel free to do so at this time okay i guess nobody does so i will keep going the next tune would be in the waltz category it's very sad we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on it but you need a mood change when you're playing a bunch of tunes if they're all happy i mean who cares uh you need the the comic relief this one is in a regular key that you will recognize but good luck figuring out where the tune is from it's from out of town of course <clears throat> and i need to change my whole mindset okay it's a slow waltz I'm going to do the whole thing 
This one is from Moravia, which I believe is now part of the Czech Republic. And I cannot pronounce the title, but just email me after the workshop and I'll make sure to send you PDFs of these tunes. Uh, the English translation that I found for this title is Don't Ride Out Sunny. I sort of feel it's an anti-war tune that just comes in handy all too often. Anyway, all hail E minor. There is nothing more moody than that, except maybe D minor, but it's also too happy. E minor. So what I do for the first phrase, it goes up a fifth. And the nice thing about fifths, when you're preparing ahead, if you want to prepare ahead, you put your first finger on both the D and the A string at the same time. It's a little easier transition. If you just play, and then you realize you need to put your first finger over here, it, the danger of lifting too soon uh, may lead you down the path of hearing an open D when you don't want to hear an open D. You know, so you have to be careful. Or you put your first finger and then you wish you had put it on two strings, but you didn't. So the plan B is, it's all in the elbow. So I don't have my finger on both strings and I'm beginning to regret it, but it's too late. The tune has started, so I move my elbow to the left and there it is. So you have both ways of getting it. So that first phrase is not repeated. Uh, the B part is repeated. The part that is not repeated is sort of a run on sentence. So I'm just going to play it over and over two or three times and you just jump on it. So. And then it goes up to a C and a little bit of a downward trend and then a little hesitancy, a bit of a question and then an answer. Anyway, you'll catch on. E minor, it's just glorious. One, two, three. the double stops that I've been struggling to perfect all week. Uh, I'm a lot closer than I was last week. So I put a, a nice mellow open G under that first note. And then if I have left my first finger on both the D and the A string, I just leave it there so that it's... And then... So I, I change. When the melody notes don't change, Oftentimes, that's when I like to change the harmony because it has more of a chance to breathe. Good luck, folks. One, two, three. <laughs> Technique in that phrase that goes, I've got a B under the F sharp, and then I have two repeating A's in the melody, but I don't want the harmony to uh, not repeat. That was a stupid phrase. Anyway, I use a D sharp for the first one and an F sharp, which just leads you to, so it's kind of nice if the harmony lines that you're adding are almost a melody in themselves. And that way uh, it's, it's just funner. So the, the harmony goes. It's so mournful. Let's do that another time or two. I'm keeping an eye on the clock to make sure we get to everything. One, two, three. And I do like adding a slide in there. 
or it might be referred to as a schmear in klezmer music. You don't want to do it too much, but it's fun when it works. The B part of this tune, very repetitive. And I do put a slide in there as well, because I can. And that repeats. So let's just do those two, that phrase, over and over. One, two, three. phrase is similar to the phrase in the first part. So I'll do that just that one little bit several times. Two, three. Again, two, three. Once more, two, three. And the very ending is a little different. D sharp. And then back to an E minor chord. Again, a few times. D sharp to an F sharp. Again. Once more. Okay, now let's try the entire B part. And the B part is repeated. Do you remember how the B part starts? No, that's okay. That's the way these things work. I mean, eventually you will. And if you don't, you can email me, you'll get the PDF, and then you'll be able to say, oh yeah, I remember that now. That's the way it goes. So I'll start from, okay, one, two, three. interesting without being impossible. Uh, so it goes, it starts out with a B and then it goes to a G and then a B. So it's, no, that was wrong. I will do it again. I like to do with harmonies. When the melody goes up, the harmony should go down. It's like having a discussion with husbands. They say one thing and you know it's the other thing. And that goes round and round and round. <coughs> like in the ending, particularly. <coughs> Whoops, that was it, yeah. Because <coughs> the bottom line goes <coughs> three blind mice. There's a lot you can do with these wonderful minor tunes and you can accentuate the chord changes that you like. Let's try that whole tune and let's do it twice through. I'm gonna loosen my bow a little bit. Okay. Oh, I told you where it's from, right? Do you remember where it's from? <laughs> yeah, it's from Arabia with an unpronounceable title, but it's, it's just gorgeous. One, two, three, one, two, go.
like slowing down at the end because then I have a better chance of getting the double stops that I wanted to get. Sometimes I just have trouble doing it up to tempo. So the safe thing is just slow it down. Because I've got a two, one, oh, along with a one, two, one. And I find separating them rather than slurring them makes them sound smoother than they really are. And that can be fun. Yeah, Moravia, who knew? So many great tunes are just everywhere. Anyone have any questions on this tune before we go on to the next? You're still practicing this one. Nope. Did you want so the one question we had, Marianne was saying uh, how beautiful this song was. Um, and she was asking about is sending it, uh, emailing you and sending it after the workshop. And I uh, let her know that, that it, you will send the PDF if uh, they get an email from you or from me. You can email me or Debbie. We'll be for sure you get that PDF. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because this learning by ear thing, it's really great, but sometimes the tunes just evaporate. And all you need is just a little bit of a reminder, and then it's totally there. Uh, okay, the next tune, it's a polka. It's a one, two, three part polka. Each part is in a different key. I'm not gonna tell you which keys up front, you'll get intimidated. Uh, and I'm gonna play it as I think it is, and uh, with the repeats, each section is repeated. Uh, the joke section is in the middle, but you'll know what it is when we get there. And uh, I'll do it up to tempo with the repeats, and then we'll slow the whole thing down. It's a completely different mood, so hopefully you're not too depressed from the previous tune. It's such a problem, you know, I've been working with fiddle players for a long time and it's just really hard to find a tune that either nobody knows <laughs> or something, just so you don't bore them to death. This particular tune comes from Slovenia. And it's another unpronounceable title, uh, but the translation is Little She Dove, as opposed to the Hymn Dove, I don't know. Anyway, so there it is. So you've got those three sections. Let's start with the middle section, which is one of my favorite sections, because you've got that joke in the middle where all of a sudden you're not playing. It's like that place in the Haydn Surprise Symphony where it's a... You know, just an all of a sudden thing. So uh, it's very cool. It starts out just a nice, by the way, the middle part is in the key of C. repeats and then that sort of repeats but the third time you go and then there's the silence and then that phrase repeats again just that dual three times and then you do the upward descending thingy and then back to the dual and then it ends just like that first phrase did so I'm just gonna play it all the way through uh, just that first part. 
And then you need to be able to count out the rests. So it's one, starts out with a third finger on the D string. One, two, one, two. problems yet? Okay, let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. Okay, Ruth's not quite ready. <laughs> Ruth is worth waiting for, it has been my experience. <laughs> so, get to it. All right, one, two, go. section. Now what you do with the rests is you can play a joke on your fellow musicians, particularly if you're doing an online thing. And I have a student in Missouri who raises rabbits and chickens and he has a horse and he, he, he names his cats after Greek gods. He's very fun, but he likes to pretend during lessons that his screen has frozen. And then I have to figure out if it's true or not, well, he's he's wised up. So it used to be he would um, he would leave the up the ceiling fan on. Well, he would pretend to be frozen, but the ceiling fan is still going. So that was kind of obvious. But then he figured that out. But then another time, the ceiling fan was still going, and I could see the reflection on his fiddle. Poor guy. Yeah, he's hysterical. So but it's really fun because people will panic. They'll dial nine one one and everything. If you go. Uh, <laughs> really a fun thing to do. So let's do that middle part once more and practice uh, your deceptive freezing. One, two, ready, go. almost fooled me. So that's good. You got to look frozen. Let's go right on to the third section, which starts with the last note of the previous section. So we ended up with a and the next section starts on right out with that G. And it's a G major scale going up. Does that remind anybody of a song? Well, it reminded me of a song. So, and I'll continue with that. It starts out in the middle of the song in which it reminded me of. Now, little stupid relationships like that may actually help you memorize the tune. Or if you think you have forgotten the tune and you happen to remember, oh yeah, that lady said it sounded just like Alouetta, and then you'll remember that phrase and that will help you keep the whole tune together. 
So let's start out as just a G major scale. And then it goes up a little more. Let's just do that much a couple times. Ready, go. One more time. Ready, go. And then the next phrase is very similar to the last phrase we just did, except it starts out on an E. So it's kind of repetitive. So I'll do that much. That's an entire thought. I don't know what they were thinking, but that was it. So let's do it again, just that whole bit. We'll do that phrase several times. Ready, go. G major. Let's do it again. Ready, G major. time. Ready, go. Then the next phrase starts on the note we just left, and it goes a little bit of a descending thing in a pattern. So it goes one note down, and then you repeat that note. One note down, and then it resolves up. So we'll just do that section a few times. Starting from a third finger on the A string, one and two and. Let's do that again. Ready, go. is almost exactly the same. And then it just ends. Two quarter note Gs. So let's do that entire second half of the third section. Welcome to G major. One and two and. Do that section again. One and two and. Let's do it again and I'll try to add the double stops that I could barely do a few weeks ago, but I think they're coming along. Same thing, one and two. section which gets repeated one but don't repeat the mistakes just repeat the notes you got that are good substitute if you have to one two ready go G major up So there we are in G. 
The beginning of the tune is in F major. We tend, I think, as fiddle players to not embrace the, the tunes with flats as, as much as we should. Uh, they're a great relief from all of the G's and D's and A's. And uh, they're really wonderful. And anyway, in this key, it's just one flat anyway. It's not such a big deal. Okay, so it starts out with an arpeggio pattern and then a descending scale-like passage. And then another arpeggio pattern and another descending thing and another arpeggio pattern another descending scale passage and then it ends and then the whole thing repeats so the first pattern is an, uh, an f major but it starts on an a but it's still f major so open A, one and two, and yeah, I would recommend an up bow for this one. I've tried several bowings, I think it works. Who knows what I'll think in another year. One and two and one. Now it's gonna descend back up to a G and then down to the octave below G. And then the scale pattern down. Starting on an open A for another arpeggio up. And a scale pattern down. And a little bit down. And it repeats. with the arpeggios you can any get into it yeah any questions you don't see any questions amber i do not i think you're good okay to continue. they're they're just all so brilliant so what i do in this first section when i want to do some double stops without a whole lot of work because after all it's it's an f uh, when i'm doing that arpeggio i leave my second finger down I do not lift it when I am playing the F. And when I am playing the A, I play that note that I just put down. I have had a little trouble getting it perfectly in tune, but you will do better, I'm sure. So leave the two down and just play that second finger on the A along with the high A. Let's just try that. It's very powerful. One and two and go. Do it again. One, two, go. One more time. One, two, go. Yeah, so that can help there. And then when you get to the next one, yeah, see, yeah. When I'm doing the next arpeggio pattern, I leave my first finger on that B flat and I use it underneath the long G. Laundry. Oh well. Leaving it down. And it's just right there. Let's try that. G, B flat, E. One and two and go. Again, one and two and go. One more time. One and two and go. One open. Yes, and then when the next arpeggio happens, it's the same thing. You leave your two down, and then it's right there. Okay, when I get to the end, I do. That's real easy. You add an A under that F, and then your next note's gonna be an open E. So you take your first finger and put it a fifth lower onto the B flat. So the top voice goes, and the bottom voice goes. So you put them together and it's. 
So let's practice that just a couple times because it's really cool. You'll be able to use these techniques in lots of other tunes. One, two. Again. One more time. And when you go from this first section into the second section, uh, after you do the, re you repeat the first section and then it goes. which is act outlines a G major chord, and that gets you into, which is very fun. So I see we've got about 10 minutes left. Let's do the whole tune. Moderate tempo, best of luck. Email me for all those questions you just can't verbalize at the moment, and uh, let me know you need the PDF. Oh, and the other thing overall, uh, if you're not familiar with the Minnesota State Fiddlers Association, you need to, to access their stuff. During this pandemic, they have been creating tons of wonderful online opportunities that don't feel like second best, uh, jam sessions and workshops and stuff. And I can give you their, their email. Uh, their origin story uh, was, of course, that Elmer Wick tune uh, that I did at the beginning. But the only reason I'm aware of all that stuff is because years ago, I had a student who came for a lesson and she was classically trained, but she was very interested in fiddling. And we had a lot of lessons and workshops and stuff. And things were going great, and then she left. And she moved to Minnesota. And she is now the president of the Minnesota State Fiddlers Association. So we have quite a bond going. And she's very creative and very lively. She's lots of fun. Mary Pat, if you contact them, you tell Mary Pat Debbie said hi. Okay, so Little She Dove from Slovenia, a nice moderate tempo. And then if you have any questions after, we can certainly entertain those. Or if you wanna hear any of those tunes again, right away. Um, I'm all warmed up now. <laughs> okay, beginning, little sheet of, so we're gonna do those. One and two and go. that I do in that last section. It just felt like the thing to do. I tried it with separate bowings. And it sounded too much like a very boring exercise that no one wants to do. So I slur those. I just like doing it down, up, up. I think it's more buoyant somehow. So those are the three tunes. I hope you love them, or you at least like them. Uh, and hopefully this will uh, encourage you to explore more of the tunes from the upper Midwest. 
and from Slovenia and Scandinavia and uh, Moravia. Anyone have any questions or do you want to hear any of those tunes again? I probably do it better the next time. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> I, I just want to take a, a quick ch a second to thank everyone for coming and really Debbie, thank you so much. So, you know, the thing about the Homestead Act is it didn't um, it, you didn't have to be an American citizen. Uh, you had to declare your intention to become one. So Debbie teaches these three international uh, songs to remember the music legacy, but also to remember the immigration legacy. And we couldn't make her workshop possible without the Friends of Homestead, the Coffin Family Foundation, and the Nebraska uh, Humanities, Humanities Nebraska. Um, so we're grateful to all three of them. Also, if you want to check our Facebook uh, uh, site at noon, we will be having a live fiddle competition sounds great well thank thank you all for sticking with it and like i say any questions you know you can email me uh we, we also offer a lot of workshops and stuff and opportunities that we might hear of that might interest you guys so that would be nice so amber i was hoping you would have a fiddle this year but you didn't i still have the fiddle i still haven't learned <laughs> uh, uh. Maybe oh, next year. There's always next year. There's always next year. And, and I'm sure all the fiddlers that you'll hear this year at the contest will inspire you. Absolutely. And if, for the website, um, just email if you want any of these songs, email Debbie and I will be for sure to email her um, the YouTube link once it goes live as well. Um, and uh, definitely feel free to email that Amber email address that you all uh, registered with if you have any additional questions. Yeah, the contest at noon, the link will be on Homestead National Historical Park's Facebook page. And it will link you to our YouTube Live. Great. And what time is the competition starting this year? Noon uh, Central Daylight Time. Okay. And we have uh, people, who, juniors who have played less than five years, seniors will have played more than five years, and legends will have won the senior competition before. Uh, usually there is an acoustic band component. We hope to add that competition again next year. So you guys should all enter next year. There's $3,000 worth of prizes. <laughs> so thank you so much. You all have a great day. You too. Thanks, Amber, for all your work ahead of time and stuff. And I hope you get a nap in later <laughs> Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you so much. It was so great to uh, hear you play. And uh, we look forward to it next year. Me Bye. too. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I think I did.